thanks for joining. I have an exciting book to read to you. The book is called Fossils and Dinosaurs. It is written by Julie K. Lendron. Paleontology is the study of ancient life using fossils. Here are a table of contents. Table of contents is a list of topics that the story is going to talk about, and it usually tells us what pages those topics are on. You've probably seen these in an informational book or even in a chapter book. Life on Earth changes. Life on Earth has changed over time. Today's plants and animals differ from the past. Flowers and furry animals such as dogs, cats, and rabbits came much later in Earth's history. So this cute little bunny did not exist with the dinosaurs. Some life forms such as dinosaurs no longer exist. Dinosaurs once lived on every continent on Earth. Continents are large land masses on Earth. So Earth has seven continents. The seven continents are North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. Today, we live in North America. Back then, dinosaurs lived on every single continent. That must be a lot of dinosaurs. Time machine? We learn about prehistoric life on Earth through fossils. By studying fossils, we can look back through vast spans of time, millions of years. Here they show a Tyrannosaurus rex fossil, a fish fossil, and a dragonfly fossil. My son has a fossil model of a T-Rex, which shows the bone structure of it. It's pretty cool. Paleontologists have uncovered fossils of dinosaur bones, teeth, feathers, scales, claws, eggs, nest, and footprints. So this paleontologist has discovered some teeth, eggs, claws, and footprints. This information will help them figure out which dinosaur he is looking at. Paleontologists can measure the age of fossils and learn which dinosaurs lived at the same time. Paleontologists use rock layers to learn the age of fossils. The oldest fossils are on the lower layers and the newest fossils are on the upper layers. So say we have our Earth. Earth has a layer of rocks and sand. Like this. And over time, more rocks and more sand will go over that layer. You can see now that there is a lower layer and an upper layer. So the book is saying that the oldest fossils are found on the lower layer and the newest fossils are found on the upper layer. Pretty cool. From the shape, size, and contents of fossil eggs, we can learn what kind of dinosaur laid them. So take this. I have this egg and this egg. Which egg do you think was laid by a dinosaur. Hmm, I think it's this egg because dinosaurs were so big and this is a big egg. This egg I know came from a chicken. I've seen this egg in my fridge, right? So I know it's not this one. By studying plants and dinosaur fossils from the same age and area, we can begin to understand dinosaur life and habitats. So habitats are the environment that plants and animals naturally live in. So some habitats can be the ocean, the desert, the jungle, somewhere it's cold. Footprints provide clues about how fast a dinosaur moves and if it walked on two or four feet. So let's look at these footprints. 
These footprints look as if a dinosaur was walking like this on the ground. Okay? I think the dinosaur has two feet. Just like this T-Rex, right? The two feet. Now, I can also look at the footprint. The footprint has one, two, three toes. Hmm. This T-Rex has one, two, three toes. This footprint could possibly be a T-Rex. Allosaurus, a meat eater, and Brachiosaurus, a plant eater, lived about 140 million years ago. So here, the Allosaurus is a meat eater. That's also called a carnivore. The Brachiosaurus is a plant eater, which is also called a herbivore. Are you a carnivore or are you a herbivore? Hmm. I like this timeline down here. It says going from today and it's going back in time. So if we go back, 65 million years ago was the last dinosaur seen. If we even go more time back, the very first dinosaur was here 245 million years ago. That's a long time. A prehistoric environment may look very different that place from that place today. A cool, deep forest once grew on what is now Antarctica. So in this picture, this is how Antarctica looks today. It's cold, it's icy, it's a lot of white everywhere. Back then with dinosaurs, there was green, there was forests and mountains. So it looks very much different from back then to today. Comparing then to now, we can compare dinosaur fossils to each other and to animals today. Clues from fossil fossils points to birds as the closest living relatives of dinosaurs. So velociraptors actually have feathers and hollow bones just like birds. I can kind of see the resemblance. As we dig and study more fossils, we will learn more. Exciting discoveries are still to be found. So today there's still a lot of people trying to figure out fossils. They're using special tools to find and dig up fossils. They have to use these so they don't break the bones and be very careful with them. So I think that's pretty cool. That does conclude the story, but they do have some questions for us. Do you know your fossil facts? Question number one, what can paleontologists use to figure out how fast a dinosaur moved? Is it eggs, footprints, or claws? Hmm. Ah, uh, I think the answer is footprints, because if you think about them moving, you can look at their footprints. Second question, where do dinosaurs live? North and South America, Antarctica, or on every continent? If you picked on every continent, you are correct. Because dinosaurs lived on every single continent. Last question, what animals are the closest living relatives to dinosaurs? Is it birds, crocodiles, or lizards? If you said birds, you're correct, because it did say that that Allosaurus or that Velociraptor looked very similar to that little roadrunner. Good job, guys. All right, here's a glossary. It's a good tool to figure out what words mean, so you can always look back at it. Before we end, the video. I want to bring on a special guest up here. He is my son. He is named Liam. Come on up, Liam. He wants to share some of his favorite dinosaurs with you. Can you share it, buddy? Yes. Okay. This is a Stegosaurus. Cool. This is a Rachiosaurus. This is a Stegomolech. This is a 
say the Nachosaurus. This is a Ankylosaurus. This is a Triceratops. This is a Pterodactyl. This is a Velociraptor. Cool. The last thing is... Whoa! How cool! The Dominic Strip. It was created by Dr. Wu, but it wasn't a real dinosaur. It was created in Jurassic World. <gasps> You're telling me this is not a real dinosaur? So he was saying it was created in a lab, but it surely does look like a dinosaur. <laughs> Thank you, Liam. That was awesome. Do you have any last messages for the kids today? Yes. Yeah? All right. What did you want to say? I wanted to say, um, uh, I wanted to say, um, um, I wanted to say good job, kids. Oh, and, awesome. Um, keep on learning, right? Yeah, keep on learning. Awesome. Thank you, Leo, for the awesome message and the awesome teaching us. We're going to head out, guys. But before we head out, the again, the name of the book was Fossils and Dinosaurs. It was written by Julie K. Lundgren. It is an AR book, so go ahead and re-watch the video, re-read it again, and go ahead and take a test. Thank you, everyone. Bye.